Welcome to the next one in the series that I'm doing on the mnemonic Great Dream, which, if you remember, helps us to think about the 10 keys to happiness. So far, we've covered G for giving, R for relating, and E for exercise. And today we move on to the letter A, which stands for awareness. The key emphasis about this one, about developing awareness, is about getting better at taking the time to stop and take notice of what is going on in the present moment. Learning to be aware in the present moment really can do wonders for our well-being. That might seem strange, but remember that all these keys are based on evidential research. It helps us get in tune, that, that awareness helps us get in tune with what's going on in our bodies and in our minds. It helps us to stop dwelling on the past and projecting into the future. You might be familiar with the word mindfulness, which is another key word that's been used a lot in these last years, which in a sense talks a little bit about what awareness is about. Two of the key things on mindfulness, which are just as important for when we think about awareness or developing our awareness, are this. First of all, that it is, a, it is an intentional practice, it is something we intentionally do. And when we're thinking of developing our awareness in the present, we need to make the space to intentionally do it. But the second very important thing is that it is non-judgmental. It is accepting of whatever we notice. It is making sure that we refrain from judging or analysing what we notice, but that we simply notice it. Now, I wonder, as you're listening, if any of you have been reminded of what I've often talked about when I've talked about centering prayer, because there are many similarities to the secular practice of mindfulness and to this kind of prayer. This kind of prayer encourages us to stop, to slow down and to simply notice what is present in the moment as we centre ourselves on God. It's a brilliant way to both develop our prayer life and, surprise, surprise, it also has a positive impact on our well-being. So to finish this thought for the day, I'm going to, I want to just remind you of this practice of centering prayer. And I'm going to add a couple of extra little things in it to help you to develop it in terms of improving your, the way that you develop your own sense of awareness. And I encourage you as you listen to maybe press the pause button after I've said each one and just to engage with it as you as you do the practice and then to think about how you might intentionally do that over these next weeks, days, months and even years. Notice I use the word practice. It really does take practice and the only way it will become a habit is to do it intentionally day by day. So I invite you now just to make sure you're sitting somewhere comfortable. And firstly, just to acknowledge God's presence with you and around you, just by saying the words, Lord God, I welcome you into this space. Maybe press pause as you do that before you move on. When you've got into that space, focus then on your breathing. Take some long Deep and slow breaths. Slow your breathing down. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth if you can. And do that for at least a minute. Again, just as a way of becoming present in the moment and stilling your mind and your body. Again, maybe press pause before you move on. And now. Notice what is present. What can you see? What can you touch? What can you, what can you hear? Can you smell anything? Can you taste anything? Just become aware through your senses of what you notice in this moment. And then having done that, don't think about those things. Just become aware of them and return back to focusing on your breathing. 
Now, if you're anything like me and like most of the population, one of the things you will notice is that the chatter in your mind starts to go double speed. There's something about when we begin to slow our bodies down that we become more aware than ever of what's going on in our heads. That's okay. But what I encourage you to do is, as soon as you notice a thought come into your mind, simply do that. Just notice it and let it go. Some people find it really helpful, and I know I've talked about this before, to imagine your thoughts as boats on a river. Imagine you're standing on a river bank and you see a boat coming by. Notice the boat and then just watch it sail on past. And it's a bit like that with your thoughts. Notice the thought, whatever it might be. Don't start indulging the thought or going anywhere further with it. Don't jump onto the boat. Just let the thought go by. And don't worry if, you, if you're new to this, and even if you're not so new to it, you'll probably find that that annoying boat just keeps coming back. And each time it comes back, just notice it again and let it go by. It's all a part of developing this practice and it takes time. The important thing is that when you notice your thoughts is not to indulge them, not to start analysing them and going further with them, as I say, not to jump on the boat, but simply to notice them and accept them. Your mind will seize the opportunity to run wild with thoughts and feelings and memories. Don't judge yourself for that. Don't feel bad. Don't give up. Don't worry. Just notice your mind start to wander and then recenter again. Sometimes a way to recenter that can be quite helpful is just to go back. Once you've noticed the thought and just let it go by, is just to come back to your breathing. And it can be really helpful sometimes just to think of a prayer word, a word you're going to use as you breathe in and out, just to help to refocus yourself. Sometimes I just say Jesus as I pray in and out, or the word peace, whatever might work for you that's going to help you just to remain focused on God. But the main goal is simply to recognise that in this space you are intentionally making the time just to be with Jesus, not to talk to him, not to necessarily hear anything from him, just to be. And each time something gets in the way, a thought or a feeling, whatever it might be, to simply notice it let it go by and come back to your focus on Jesus. Now in the beginning, just doing this for one or two minutes can be a huge win. Ten minutes is a home run. It can take lots and lots of practice for it to become something that we feel more comfortable with. It's really hard actually for most of us to properly stop and be still and present. It's amazing how easily our minds take over. But I encourage you, if you don't already practice prayer in this way, to commit to doing it daily, to develop the practice so that it becomes a habit. Start small, even if it's just for five minutes a day, even if it's just for two, although I think you'd struggle to do, to really kind of begin to slow down if you did it for anything less than two, and I'd encourage you to try and start with five. It takes practice, it takes discipline, but goodness me, it is worth it. It's a long-term practice, but you'll, you will begin as you get into the practice to notice a difference. And you're bound to because you're opening yourself up to spending time in God's presence and God changes us, he transforms us. I've noticed since I've been doing this practice for several years now that, that I do generally feel more, more at peace in myself. I've noticed myself changing. It's not something I notice day by day because it's a long-term, big-picture thing. But my well-being and my relationship with God has grown and deepened. So I encourage you, take the time, make the time to think about how you can become more aware in the present moment. It might even be 
that you say, well, if I go out for my daily walk, I'm going to just find time just to stop for five minutes and see how I can indulge myself in this practice, partly to help my own well-being and partly to deepen my relationship with God. So are you willing to do it? Are you willing to try developing this practice? That's my challenge for you and for me today. God bless.